and exactly exactly we can't see the networks and that's the problem with the view from the top it's this idea that the organization is the structure that we see in the organization chart and i know he didn't invent it but one of my colleagues who i work with just came up with this nice phrase that the organizing is really in the white spaces of the organization chart it's what we don't see and you you see it if you're as it were in the work process if you if you're doing the work because it's it's your networks your connections your relationships with other people through which you get things done but i think as you were saying that doesn't matter at all from the point of view of the view from the top there it's you know it's the, it's the old kind of model the the old efficiency model what revenue are we bringing in you know what's it costing that sort of thing how, and 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 the the enormous complexity of the of the social complexity of organizing is in which where in which the knowledge sharing takes place you know the conversations that those networks telephone emails faxes all that way of sh all those different ways of instant messaging face to face meetings that sort of thing all that is is completely invisible so we we're, we're really not organizing at all and i'm not being hard on management as people who do the managing i'm just being hard on management as a kind of mental model you know as a as a way of seeing things the 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 the, the management systems that we have are were never designed for sharing knowledge and they're completely unsuitable for sharing knowledge really and that's why i said you know early on that in a way if you if you're thinking of a bad system for knowledge sharing that's the system that you would have neil you might also say that the managers themselves are not designed to share knowledge in the case of companies but in fairness to them uh you it, it, it is uh, uh possibly uh, true that the the vision they have the Right. On the, that right. Yeah. Well, I'd say that you, you have two different views of how things work. You have the view from the top, which is things work because somebody controls it, and what you need is structure and control. And then you're up against this idea that it's very complex, so we need complex structures and complex controls, right? And then there's the other view which is the view from work that says there is no control over this process. It works because people have responsibilities, commitments, relationships with other people. That's how we organize we're social beings. That's how we've always done it. And that's how it works. And and so it now I I'm trying not to be naive about it, but it really doesn't need structure in the sense of somebody saying this is how it's going to work. because that sort of structure will always be inadequate it's too fluid and dynamic and and it's too intangible the process of sharing knowledge of getting work done so the idea of imposing a structure is always the wrong idea and it stifles creativity Exa exactly and and that's such a great point in this i because i think the thing about knowledge work peter drucker didn't really talk who you know when he he coined the term knowledge work and knowledge work didn't really talk too much about it. but to me that's the essence of knowledge work what distinguishes it from factory work is that it it's fundamentally creative that everything we do comes from ideas from not necessarily from individuals ideas but from the what comes out of the conversations that we have this is what we're going to do this is what matters these are the people we're going to bring on board because they have the capabilities there's no pre-existing structure there it's it's all created you know in the, in the language of 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 today's science it's about emergence and 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 that's a, a very sort of deeply creative process it requires us to use our imagination what's possible with factory work for which our management processes were designed there was no creativity there are the machines this is the production process we don't want you to be creative if you do you get to screw it up you get you know you're going to stop us being efficient we don't want you to talk because it's you and the machine you know we don't want you to have conversations and so that and i i you know i believe that that 
mindset, that, that way of thinking is still deeply embedded. We don't want you to have conversations. We want to sit you behind your cubicle and we want you to do your, you know, your, uh, your quota of, 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 of hours of work that we're going to measure, that sort of thing. And if you take a management point of view, though, mm -hmm. you know, knowledge sharing is about collaboration. Yes. And management is happy for people to collaborate. Is it? Oh, yeah. They want people to collaborate. <laughs> but then they see the point of view that, well, first of all, the people themselves mm -hmm. have to be motivated to collaborate rather than compete, right? That's right. one thing. Second of all, the management has to impose, feels that they must enforce constraints. What? Because resources are limited. And the people who do the work most often, I mean, if you want a perfect example of having a very good engineering team come up with a great solution and completely ruin the company, is to have no constraints on the resources. Right. Okay? So the management point of view has to be that we are, in, we are the people worried about the, the survival of the organization as a whole. Sure. Okay? And so we must have constraints. And the constraints are resources, time, money, future right. of the business. Right. Because each individual at the worker level will be collaborating with other individuals. Don't keep these things in mind. So if, sure. unless you share the knowledge with the workers as to what are the constraints, and then you have to really be a company that is not based on competition, but on collaboration all the way through. Mm -hmm. And that's not the American model. That's not the capitalist model. So you're talking about a fundamental problem of social and uh, economic organization. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. How no. Do we change uh, all that? What? How do we change all that? How do we change all that? We lay a lot of blame on the <laughs> right, 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 right. What's the answer? Because that that structure is not going to go away. Uh -huh. Yes, it may be arbitrary, but it is needed for budgeting purposes. Yeah. For, the, well, the know, structure. I mean, that's. But, but how do we get around it? Right. Well. That's the answer. Uh, yeah, let me, let me try, try to answer that. I, I don't, you know, if I, if I had the answers and I could sell them, I think I could probably make a, make a lot of money. I, I think we do have the answers, but, but th there's a great book. Most of, the, you know, most of the good ideas I get come from students, and, 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 and this book was a recommendation from a student. It's Gordon McKenzie's book, and it's called Orbiting the Giant Hairball. Orbiting the giant giant Hairball. It's published by Viking, a subsidiary of Penguin, and the subtitle is something like a corporate fool's guide to surviving with grace. <laughs> and uh, Gordon McKenzie worked for um, Hallmark greeting cards, and he was a creative person. I mean, he drew, made up the greeting cards. And then over the years, they kind of turned him into a guru to, to, to be a, a mentor and you know, shape the way people thought about things. And, uh, and, and, and the story in his, in his book is really about creativity. I mean, the book is how do we sustain creativity and that our organizations are not designed for creativity, the sort of thing we've been talking about.